first of all, thank you so much, Marion. Thank you so much, Leanne, for bringing together two great GOP committees in the northern part of the state. I'm very excited to be back here again uh, to let you probably all know or probably have heard a little bit that I've got a special announcement so the cat's out of a bag that's coming up next week. So I'm very excited to be back here to tell you first that I am going to be running for governor again. And I'm very excited to be back here today and I'm actually a little bit pumped up because, you know, Pat mentioned a little bit about Go Local Props poll, but I don't know if you all of you saw that poll today and Josh releasing the governor's number, as well as many of the other statewide office holders. The governor's approval ratings, or let's just say disapproval ratings, 61% negatives. <laughs> Folks, that is not sound leadership for this state. We need a leader who will take a bulldozer to that state house and shake up our state. And I intend to be that leader. But we have to, what I learned from the last election cycle is, as a party, we have to stand united behind the candidate that can first off raise the dollars to go up against the governor's money machine from Wall Street. And we also have to stand behind a candidate that has the executive leadership to turn things around and really take a bulldozer to that marble dome in Providence. And I am that leader because I raised that million dollar last time and I'm well on my way. We haven't even launched yet and you're gonna see at the end of this quarter I've got over $200,000 in my bank account towards that one million uh, threshold I need to reach. And let's talk about the executive leadership that we've shown in Cranston. You know, I love Marion, what she talked about with Garden City, but before we even focus on the business and the development that's going on, I need to focus on what we've done financially because that's what we have to do as a state, focus on our finances first. When I first got into office, I inherited, inherited deficits of unbelievable proportion. It was a financial mess. Nine million dollars in debt with our schools. A million and a half on the city side. And we're facing like Cumberland, Woodstock, and every other community, multi-million dollar cuts mid-year to the tune of about five million dollars in Cranston. But I wasn't gonna cry. We rolled up our sleeves and made the necessary cuts. Made the necessary reforms to our pension systems. Did what was necessary to hold people accountable. And I'm proud to say that our school system paid the city back every single penny that it owed us, all $9 million. And today, they are actually running surpluses. And we have one of the... <laughs> <laughs> and that's not at the expense of our kids. Because I'm proud to say we have the best career and tech center in Rhode Island, offering many of our students college credits if they decide to uh, go into one of those programs or learning about a career. Options for our students. Our city side has the largest rainy day fund of any city or town in Rhode Island at $20 million. That is fixing our financing. And that has led our city to have the highest bond rating in over two decades. I'm very proud of the fact that we tackle those deficits and turn Cranston around first. Because when you focus on the finances, that's how you can improve the services that we provide to our residents. Because I'm proud of our school system, but we also have an award-winning, nationally award-winning library system that was recognized last year along with the New York Public Libraries and Louisville, Kentucky Libraries. All of this has led to even more investment in our infrastructure, in our parks. And when you put all that together, I'm proud that Cranston for three years in a row has been named one of the best communities to live in America. And that's what we have to do with the State House. We need to shake things up so badly 
to focus on our finances, make cuts, make serious reforms, because I'm tired of hearing about not $140 million in deficits, but deficits that keep growing at well over $200 million now. We've got to tackle those problems, make serious cuts to the programs that this governor is putting forward for political purposes. Because that's not right, and that's not serving all of us. And most importantly, it's not serving the next generation, the kids that are running around here. We've got to invest back into our community, just like what I've done in Cranston. And we've focused first, not only on finances, but on our businesses. I'm proud that the landscape is dotted with international manufacturers like Taco, Alex and Ani, Yushin. Been able to attract national retailers like L.L. Bean that sits in Garden City. But most importantly, not forget the small business owners like Geraldine's Sewing Shop. When you focus on businesses cutting through the red tape, they will come. But the most proud thing isn't just Garden City and Chapel View, and you can even ask Geo. Acres and acres of development in that central part of not only Cranston, but the central part of our state, not one single tax dollar went to a developer, any corporation, any millionaires, or any billionaires. So if you do it with sound leadership, you can have a thriving business environment. And that's what I intend to do for our state. We will do it the right way, and we will bring back accountability to our state house. And that's what I intend to do. And I need your help to do it, because we will make sure that state house is for all of us. But most importantly, this state is gonna be just like Cranston, one of the best places to live in America, and it starts with all of us here tonight. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Proud to be back here.